In an autumn afternoon in 1962, a moving picture director needed to step out of the busy street along which he had been walking in order to capture a thought which had begun to coalesce amongst the amorphous comings and goings of the pavement. His recipient was a somnolent residence for the orphaned accoutrements of once proud bourgeois living rooms and vestibules. It had owed the pleasure of his presence not to its languid sentimentality or to the shadows of countless affected conversations which echoed silently between the clutter, but rather to the absence of any browsing clients or staring attendants. As he moved through the shop, his thought enveloped him, and amongst the ghost of extinguished stories he began to erect living beings, characters, and a space of factors in which for them to exist forever. This germinating world was greeted by its specular counterpart as he stepped through a doorway into an outdoor room filled with the frozen incarnations of stone bodies. The clamour of domestic debris was replaced by a cast of characters seemingly caught in the midst of some eternal and unfathomable event. In his mind was a fragment of time, a fragment of narrative, a fragment of space all enclosed within a frame of meaning that would endow a form of completeness, a negation of its beginning and end. Here, before him, he saw reflections of this. He saw forms which in their physical presence were already complete, were already both beginning and end. While sliding slowly around a grey head, he saw that it was their decisive abundance of pure physicality, their irrefutable existence, which, having convinced the senses of its presence, opens the sky to the broadness of a mind's illumination. Just as each material has its point of liquefaction, so each mode of artistic creation must have a point at which its constituent parts achieve circularity, acquire the effortless presence of an artefact. He felt that the composition which had been conceived on the streets must, like these objects before him, be entirely tangible as presence and remain there, open-ended, free to be acquired in any way. The ruminations of any person who may idly walk through the door of a motion picture theatre should be able to reverberate within his composition, just as his faculties had resounded through the breathless, empty, and beguiling masses filling the small garden of an unremarkable shop.